first thing is first, thank you for join us, joining us. I'm so excited to see everyone on board our train tonight. Number two, I am um, taking attendance for today's class so that I can get make, make sure that you get the raffle entries for our end of the challenge raffle. So if your name isn't the right name where it shows it on Zoom, just throw your name in the chat and I'll make sure that we get that on the, the attendance sheet. Yes, Shelby, um, how do I do that? How do you do that? You go on the bottom. Because I had already confirmed that you were here earlier. So you're good okay. to go. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, and yeah. then, um, so you'll get, you can count this as one point for your weekly tracking. And then we'll make sure that you get the raffle points for attending. So you get five additional raffle points for attending today's class. So that's okay. awesome. Okay. okay. Cool. Um, when we're doing the presentation, we're going to start off with a little bit of trivia. So we'll have you guys kind of throwing out some answers either in the chat or by raising your hand. But during the presentation, I'm going to keep everyone muted just so that everyone can hear the content. If you have something to add, give us a little a hand raise or throw the question in the chat and we'll make sure to cover it. OK, OK, cool. And then um, we're going to do a question and answer at the very end. So you can throw questions as we go. We may hold off to the end to answer it. Um, but anything that goes in the chat, we'll cover. OK, mm -hmm. OK. And then. I'll hand it over to Kaylee, who will do some introductions and start us off. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm yeah. Kaylee. Um, I'm a registered dietitian up in Maine. Um, I currently work at a hospital up in Augusta, Maine, and I'll kind of go over that in a little bit of the presentation, too, about what I do every day. Um, but I think we're going to do the trivia to start off, right, Shelby? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me. So I'm going to quick share my screen. How do I do that, Shelby? How do I see other people on the thing? To see the view, if you go on yes. the top, gallery view, the oh. top corner that shows it should say, say view, and there's nine different dots in a square. If you click oh, that and press yeah, gallery, view. On a I, okay, I think we had this problem last time. Um, and right now, I'm going to share the screen so you won't have to see the whole group right now. Okay, okay. Cool? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Ooh. All right. So the first question um, for trivia is, when you're actively exercising or competing, what macronutrient does our body prefer to use as an energy source? Source. Your options include carbs, protein, or fat. All right. I think I saw Chelsea's hand up first. All right. It protein. Protein. It's the protein one. All right. Any other thoughts, Tori? I see your hand up as well. I wouldn't say carbs. Okay. Anyone else think it's something different? Oh, man. <laughs> All right. So the answer is carbohydrates. Um, and I'll go into this in the presentation. But to put it simply here, carbohydrates are what our body prefers to use as energy. And then protein, which was mentioned as a possible answer, that's what our body uses to recover from exercise. Yep. Going on to the next one. Sorry, my computer froze for a second. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's totally mine. All right. We all on the next slide? Yep. Okay. So when recovering after exercising or a competition, what macronutrient aids in muscle recovery and muscle building? Um, the options are carbs, protein, and fat again. I think I see Tori's hand up first. Protein. Pam, I also see your hand up. I think it's fat. 
I say a protein. Okay, we've got two for protein, one for fat. <laughs> that's what I meant. That's what I meant for protein. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Protein I, is the, yeah. <laughs> what's important for helping your muscles recover after you compete or you exercise. Right, you're right, Shelby. <laughs> All right, so uh, next question, um, an athlete's diet should consist of high amounts of blank, moderate amounts of blank, and then adequate amounts of blank. And then the blanks will either be protein, carbohydrates, or fat. So what do you think you need the most of and then the least of in your diet? I think I saw Nikita's hand up first on this one. Protein? What do you think for the second one? Me? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> protein fat. And then carbs as the third? Yes. Okay. Um, Anyone agree? Totally Anyone wrong. Have a different answer? <laughs> I, I want to say carbs for the first one, protein for the second one, and fat for the last one. Okay. Oh. Well, wow, I was way off. <laughs> I was way, I'm so bad. <laughs> oh, this is an awesome opportunity to learn more, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, when Kaylee sent me the content for this, I was even learning a lot of stuff as I was putting together the slideshow. Okay. I was way off. I'm matter. so bad. Oh, boy. <laughs> right. Next one. Um, blank could be considered one of the most important components of an athlete's diet. Options include dessert, water, or adequate hydration, or eating fruit. All right. Lori? I want to say water. That was Does my choice. Agree? Water. All right. Water. Oh, there we go. Shelby, your turn. Oh, my turn? Water. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> my computer's a little slow today. Oh, Bear yeah. with me. That's <laughs> okay. Good job. So the next question. Um, these micronutrients found in fruits and vegetables play an essential role in the metabolism of protein and carbohydrates, um, vitamins and minerals, gluten or glucose? Gluten. I heard someone who said that. I did. Chelsea, what was your answer? I said gluten and then vitamin. Okay. One or two. Tori, you have your hand up as well. I want to say vitamins and minerals. Okay, Pam, what do you think? I think vitamins and minerals. Okay. That, mm. Nice job. My. All right. So when sitting down for a balanced meal, half of your plate should consist of dairy, protein, or fruits and vegetables. Who thinks ice cream? <laughs> Just yeah, kidding. That's, ice cream is dairy. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Who are three? I, I think it's I think it's three. Three? Okay. Yeah. Fruits or vegetables. Chelsea? Yeah. I think it's two and three. Two and three. Okay, <laughs> Scott, I see a three. Tori, what do you think? One, two, three. I want to say two. Okay, Amy, what do you think? Um, I'm going to go with three. Three? Yeah. Stasia, I see a three. Yep. Okay. Fruits and yeah. vegetables. Yeah. Oh, yay. <laughs> I did it. Great Yay. job. Thank you. Oh. 
we say black beans, lentils, fish, and chicken are sources of what? Protein, cholesterol, or fiber? Let's see numbers. Can everyone hand, hold up the number that they think the answer is? Oh, wait. Okay, I see some ones, I see some twos, threes. No fours, because there's not a four. <laughs> oh, darn, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, I think I see the most ones, which would be protein. <laughs> Nice job. I got it right again. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the next question, um, a standard four ounce chicken breast, four ounce is roughly to the size of your palm. If you look at your hand is how many grams of protein? 280 grams, 28 grams, or 2.8 grams? Uh, oh. <clears throat> Hold up those fingers. One, two, or three. What do we think? Okay. I see some threes. I see some ones. I see some twos. <laughs> Number two, oh. 28 grams. Oh, my God. oh wow. <laughs> wow. I'm good at this game. <laughs> Right. And then the last question is a true or false question. An athlete should only worry about their <laughs> diet or nutrition in the days and weeks leading up to an event or competition. Fault. True. False. 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 Give me a thumbs up false. if you think like it's true. Give me a thumbs down if you think it's false. I see a lot of thumbs down. Oh, goodness. <laughs> false. False. Uh. All right. Great job, you guys. All right. Let me where it find the button for sharing my screen. It should be on the very <laughs> bottom, the green the box the with the arrow screen. going up. It's third one over where it says share screen. Right next to the chat button. Okay. Yeah, it, it should be on the bottom of your screen. What's it, next to the chat button is reactions. Is that not right? No, uh, it's right. It should be <laughs> next to reaction at the bottom here. Mm -hmm. It should be in that same bar. Uh oh. I have participants, yep. chat, yep. reactions, and settings. Okay. Thanks. Let me. Mm. I'm going to do that wow. and you might be able to now. Do you see um, it now? Copy. Oh, copy. Yeah. Perfect. It's not somebody sharing a screen because it's showing on my end green. That means somebody sharing a screen. Who's sharing the screen? Uh, yeah, mine says. I don't think so, but I, Kaylee, you can get it now. Oh, no. The, I guess the only thing that popped up was the ability to stop the recording. Okay. Not Let me see. Okay. I actually, Kay Kaylee, can you go next to my name? The Special Olympics New Hampshire and press more and make me the host again because I have the PowerPoint as well. It says recording on my screen. Yeah. It says it says you're a host now. Am I okay. so let <laughs> me just open up the PowerPoint and we should be all set to go. All right. Thank you for bearing with us, everyone. You're welcome. All right. And let's see. Can you see it? Yep. Yep. Yeah. There we go. I didn't have it big enough. <laughs> All right. So let me just start it. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, perfect. So I just wanted to talk quickly just about who I am. I kind of mentioned it before. Um, and where I'm from. I was born and raised in New Hampshire. I lived there up until I went to college. 
Um, I started going to college at the University of Maine in 2015. Um, and if you that's up in Orno. I don't know if you know where Orno is or have heard about it, but it's about five hours north of center New Hampshire. So it's quite a drive up the highway. Um, I went there for my bachelor's degree in food science and human nutrition, and I graduated in 2019. Um, and I then went on to complete the intern, the dietetic internship program, which is how you become a dietitian, and then the combined master's program at UMaine as well. And I just graduated in May of last year. Um, now I work at Maine General Medical Center in Augusta, um, which is about, it's closer to New Hampshire. It's not as far away as Orno was. Um, I started out on the pediatric and the psychiatry floor, but now I primarily work on the oncology floor. So I work with cancer, most cancer patients every day, but I do see a variety of other people as um, well, other patients as well. The next slide. Perfect. Um, so just to kind of go over what I'll be talking about today, um, I'm going to go over just everyday nutrition for athletes, um, game day nutrition, so how you should eat the night before and then the day of, how you should eat after, so post-competition nutrition, and then also just hydration and the importance of that. And I just want to note here that um, throughout the presentation, I try not to say the word diet, um, just because that kind of when we hear diet, we think limitations and restrictions. And I just want you guys to know that there are ways that you can eat your favorite foods and incorporate them into your diet without feeling like you have to not eat your favorite foods or your favorite desserts. And then also that the guidelines and the serving sizes I talk about, those are just for the general healthy adult, healthy athlete. They're not for people with certain diseases, like if you have diabetes or kidney disease. So I just wanted to say that as well. on the neck. Perfect. So getting into everyday nutrition. Um, so the first thing is proper nutrition for a competition does not happen on the day of the event alone, which we just found out in trivia. Um, and by this, I mean that everything we put into our body has an effect in some way or another. And as athletes, you want to be sure you're giving your body the proper fuel so you can compete at your best the day of your competition. Um, for example, like if you eat fast food every day up until your workout and then the day before you like, oh, I'm going to eat a nice balanced meal for dinner. You're not going to perform as well as if you had eaten a nice balanced <laughs> meals in the weeks or the months up until your competition. And you just want to give your body the nutrients to perform at your best. Um, the next couple tips are meals should be balanced and then variety is key. Um, and balanced and variety go hand in hand. Um, variety comes into play when talking about picking out fruits and vegetables and picking out your protein. And I'll kind of go into that later on too. And then balanced is another term for healthy. And I say balanced instead of healthy because healthy can mean something different to every single person. Um, and I think the easiest way to make sure you're eating a balanced meal is by following my plate, which is what this picture is in the corner here. And I'll talk about the guidelines in a little bit more detail in the next slide. And then the last tip is avoiding skipping meals. Oop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, avoiding, you just want to avoid skipping meals. I'm sure you all have heard um, that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. <laughs> and this statement reigns true for everyone, especially for athletes. While we sleep, our body goes into what we call starvation mode because yeah. most people, unless they sleepwalk, they're not going to be eating while they're sleeping. Um, so then since we aren't eating, our body just breaks down our stored nutrients to keep our body functioning. Like to keep your heart pumping or to keep your brain functioning, you use the same stored nutrients that you would when you're exercising. So when you wake up, you just wanna make sure that you eat something to replete that what was used so you have enough nutrition for when you go to work out during the day or when you go to compete the next day. All right. So what does a balanced meal look like? So this is the MyPlate diagram. Um, this is, they have their own website. It's just kind of the general recommendations for the everyday healthy person, how we should eat, what our meal should look like. Um, so as you can see, half the plates is made up of fruits and vegetables. So this is when you sit down for a meal, it doesn't have to be fruit on your plate, vegetable on your plate. You could have a fruit cup on the side, 
You could have a yogurt with fruit on it on the side, just a serving of fruit with your meal. And then also vegetables coming into that as well. Grains, um, a quarter of your plate could be made up of whole grains. Um, so a lot of times, a lot of us will sit down and have a whole plate full of spaghetti. And that's a lot of oh. pasta and that's a lot of carbs. So when thinking about a balanced meal, you kind of want to have spaghetti as a quarter of your plate. Have your meatballs, if you have meatballs on it, if you have chicken with it, as another quarter. And maybe have a salad and a little piece of cheese on the side would be an example of how you could make it more balanced, spaghetti more balanced. Um, so protein being a quarter of the plate, like I said, and you want to choose lean proteins, which I do talk about what lean proteins are in a little bit. And then you want to just have a half cup of low fat dairy product. And a lot of people not don't like to sit down and drink a glass of milk with their dinner. So dairy could be something like that you snack on in between your meals. It doesn't necessarily have to be with your meals. Like if you like yogurt as a snack, that could be an example of that. All right. The next slide, Shelby. All right. Um, so I want to talk about fruits and vegetables when talking about everyday nutrition for athletes, just because when an athlete's diet or an athlete's nutrition is discussed, fruits and vegetables aren't typically talked about. Um, and these are components of an athlete's diet that are so important because they give you guys so many important nutrients that you need as athletes. Fruits and vegetables provide vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, and energy. Um, so the energy comes from carbs because fruits and vegetables are carbs. And those are the macronutrients that our body prefers to use when we're exercising. Um, the other two macronutrients are fat and protein, which we talked about in the trivia. And one benefit of fruits and vegetables, just as a snack in general, is that they're generally lower calorie, but they keep you full longer because they have the fiber in them. And then talking about vitamins and minerals in fruits, most of the B vitamins and like magnesium, for example, um, they help our bodies actually break down carbs and protein. So when we eat fruits, the vitamins and minerals in those actually help us gain access to the nutrients, like the energy and the protein that we eat if we eat a piece of chicken or something like that. And then antioxidants, um, some research has actually sh shown that the antioxidants in berries like raspberries and blueberries help with muscle recovery um, and inflammation. So if you eat berries every day, um, it's been shown that that can help with a faster recovery or just making your muscles feel better after a workout. And then the, another tip for fruits and vegetables is eating from the rainbow. Um, this is a term that was generated to make the guidelines for fruits and vegetables more easily attainable. Um, and this simply means when you're picking out fruits and vegetables at the grocery store every week, just to pick a variety of colors. Um, and this is because the different fruits and vegetables are, the colors are associated with different vitamins and minerals. Um, no one, even myself as a dietitian, sits down and counts how much potassium or counts how much vitamin A I'm getting in a day. So eating from the rim, rainbow is just a way to make sure you're getting all those necessary vitamins and minerals. And then just some examples like dark leafy greens like spinach or kale give you some vitamin K then citrus fruits like orange or limes provide vitamin C. Right. Next slide, Shelby. All right. So with the serving sizes for fruits and vegetables I've listed here, um, it's important to note that these are just the minimums for the day. Um, if you're someone that loves to eat fruit or you love to eat vegetables, it's okay to eat more than what is listed here. Um, these are just what is recommended you eat the least of. Um, so for males, for fruits, it's two and a two and a half cups of fruit per day, three to four cups of vegetables. Um, females is a little less one and a half to two cups of fruits per day, and then two to three cups of vegetables. So then I just want to give some examples of what equal a cup of fruit or vegetables, just because if you look at a head of lettuce, it's kind of hard to determine like how much is actually a cup. Um, so a large banana um, is a cup of fruit, and a cup of fruit, 20, about 22 grapes, but a handful of grapes, two to three kiwis. Um, a cup of fruit juice actually counts as a serving of fruit. So if you like fruit juice, that can count as your serving. 
one of your servings of fruit in a day. Um, a large sweet potato or an ear of corn count as one cup. And then two medium carrots or a handful of baby carrots or a bell pepper. And then I just wanted to bring back the eating from the rainbow thing. If you look at the fruits and vegetables pictured here, you can just see how one would achieve this concept. Um, they could have like a banana with breakfast and maybe they eat grapes as a snack later on in the day. And then if they had a salad for dinner with the carrots and the tomatoes, they could get four different colors of fruits and vegetables and eat all those different vitamins and minerals without having to think about it. Next slide, perfect. So talking about protein um, as a part of the everyday nutrition, the recommendation is to choose lean protein sources. Um, and the benefit of choosing lean protein sources, they just have less saturated fats in them, um, which saturated fats are the fats that are found in animal products that aren't good for your heart. Um, and they aren't considered a healthy fat out of all the fats out there. Some examples of lean protein would be chicken or turkey, um, fish, eggs, and then beans and lentils. Um, Non-lean protein sources could be pork, beef, hamburger, bacon, or sausage. And I just want to say too, if you're someone that loves hamburger or uses hamburger a lot, a recommendation to make this more lean, you could choose ground turkey, or you could choose a hamburger with a higher percentage. And I'll show you and one of the upcoming slides, how to find the percentage on a hamburger package. Um, so protein intake should be spread throughout the day is the next recommendation. Um, there's a common idea that athletes, and I'm sure you've all heard it, that you should drink and consume protein immediately after you work out. And, but the overall recommendation is actually just to spread it out throughout the day, eat a little bit with breakfast, a little bit with lunch, have some as a snack. Um, an example of how you could do this, say you have some eggs or you have an English muffin with peanut butter for breakfast, and then you have a sandwich of some sort for lunch. It could be turkey sandwich, egg salad sandwich, chicken salad, and then for dinner, you have a piece of chicken or a piece of fish. Um, and of course, there's a hundred different ways that you could get protein, but that was just an example. And I did want to touch about protein powder just because something that's associated with athletes and is protein powder. Um, and it's just not necessary. I just want to let you know, it's not necessary that you need to drink protein powder and that it's going to provide protein that you wouldn't get from just regular food. Um, it's protein powder is meant as a supplement, meaning it's there to replace your diet. If you can't get protein that way, it's something that can be expensive. So if you can get your protein from your food, it's not only less expensive, but it's also, it probably tastes better as well. Yeah. <laughs> totally yeah sorry <laughs> and most athletes they get the amount of protein that they need through their food alone so the protein supplements just are adding extra protein that your body's not going to use anyway so right. Haley we had a question in the chat regarding is there a recommendation on how many eggs to eat per day or generally how many eggs you should be eating um I guess it depends. Um, a like a serving of an egg would be one egg or two egg whites, but I think the upper, like how you shouldn't eat, I think three is the general recommendation of like per day, how many you should be eating. All right, and then, so this is what I was pointing out before. Um, these are just two packages of ground beef. This is how it would look in the grocery store if you go to pick it out. You can see where the arrows are pointing. It just says like, so it says that lean, 80% lean, 85% lean. And those are the percentages you wanna look for if you're gonna choose ground beef over ground turkey. 80% um, or higher is what's considered a lean ground beef. So, you know. <laughs> All right, so a little bit more on protein. I'm just talking about how much protein do athletes need? Um, so there's two ways to figure this out. There's one way that um, it depends on each individual's weight, but for this presentation, I'm just gonna talk about the generic recommendations for athletes. Um, and one thing that's most people in the general public associate with the athletic diet is protein. You need a lot of protein, extra protein. And this is true because protein is essential to an athlete's diet, but it's not necessary to do all these certain diets where 
super high in protein, low in carbohydrates, because carbohydrates are just as essential to an athlete's body. Um, protein is critical when it comes to building your muscles and making your muscles stronger, but more is not necessarily better. Um, and athletes don't need, do need higher amounts than regular um, individuals just because they are competing more, they're using their muscles more. So the generic recommendation here is from my plate, um, it's men need seven to eight ounces of protein per day, and then women should get six to seven ounces of protein per day. Right. Perfect. So I just wanted to kind of point out the portions of protein. So these are examples of what one ounce of protein would be. Um, so if you think about the six to seven, you kind of want to get six to seven of one of these portions, not all of these things, but any source of protein. Um, so one egg or two egg whites, like I just said, would be um, equal to one ounce of protein. Three slices of turkey bacon count as an ounce of protein. Or if you have a one ounce piece of fish, one ounce piece of chicken, those all would equal one ounce. Um, and then we did it during trivia too, but the size of the palm of your hand is equal to roughly four ounces of protein. Um, or if you think about it, the size and the width of a deck of cards, a standard deck of cards when they're all stacked together, that's also about four ounces, which is just an easier way to kind of figure out than trying to look at the package and then cut the piece of chicken to fit a certain way or half of it. All right, it's talking about nutrition on the day of your competition or the day of your game or your event. Um, so you want to eat a balanced meal the night before is the first recommendation. Um, the night before a competition, you should take the time to just think of a yummy and hearty balanced meal that will set your body up for success the next day. Um, your meal should consist of all three macronutrients, so carbs, protein, and healthy fats. And a classic example would be whole wheat spaghetti with meatballs and then maybe a salad. And then for dessert, to get your fruit in there, you could have some frozen yogurt, or you could have some fruit dipped in some dark chocolate because dark chocolate is provides some antioxidants and vitamins and minerals, just like fruit does. Um, and then with the spaghetti, kind of how I said before, you can make it more lean by using ground turkey meatballs or ground like an 85% ground beef meatball. All right. And then you want to include carbohydrates in your snacks the day of the day before um, your meal or the hours before your meal. Um, carbohydrates, they're the fuels that our body wants for the competitions. They give our muscles the energy to function when we're running, when we're swimming, or when we're biking. Um, some examples of snacks that you could have could be um, some fruits and vegetables, crackers, a granola bar, um, or even like a little cup of pasta salad with some vegetables in there. Those are all good snacks to have before your competition. And um, the recommendation is to have your snack one to four hours before your competition. And it's just that range in there because it's dependent on how each person's body digests food. And you'll figure out what works best for you. I'm sure you all know that some of you probably can't eat an hour before and some of you can. And it just kind of depends. But the main recommendation here is you want to have um, your snack consist of carbs in one to four hours before your competition. Haley, we had two folks in the chat ask about trail mix as a snack for competition. Yeah, that's definitely a good snack. Um, it ha will have carbs and protein in there, so that's an awesome snack to have. Right. Go to the next slide, Shelby. Can you see it on your end? I think I, I think froze for a second again. Perfect. Thank All right. Um, 
And I saw a question pop up about cereal as a snack, and that's also a good snack choice. Just wanted to say that too. Um, so talking about, now we moved into nutrition for after you've competed, you just won your competition, what, what should you eat? Um, so you, this is when you wanna have your protein snack. Um, research has shown that choosing a healthy protein snack within two hours after your workout can help with a faster muscle repair and growth. Um, this isn't to say that after your competition, you should worry about running home as fast as you can or stopping at the grocery store to get a snack immediately. Just within those two hours is okay. And you just wanna think about what you're eating high in protein. Um, and then don't forget about the carbs and fats. And this is when it comes to your first big meal after your competition. Depending on when your competition is, whether your next meal is lunch or dinner, um, you should meal should consist of all three macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat. Um, carbs will replace the energy stores that you depleted while you were competing. Um, protein will help with the muscle recovery. And then fat just provides you with additional calories that you need to make up for those that you lost during the competition. So you don't feel tired or fatigued and fats will help with that. Um, and then you want to drink enough water to replace your losses. And this is kind of hard to determine how much water you lose from sweat when you're working out, unless you're going to weigh yourself before and weigh yourself after, but that's just a lot of work and no one wants to do that. Um, so just in general, you just want to make sure that you're drinking enough to re rehydrate your body. Um, there's an estimate of you should drink 10 ounces of water for every 30 minutes of exercise you completed. So if, you exer if your competition was an hour, you want to drink about 20 ounces of water, which is about one and a half water bottles. Um, if your competition was two hours, you want to drink 40 ounces and so on. We had another question in the chat regarding after competing. Can you have chicken and stuffing and mas mashed potatoes or drink coffee? Yeah, um, I think that would be it. the chicken stuffing and mashed potatoes. That would definitely be a good like meal to have after your competition because you got the protein. Mashed potatoes is the carbs and then stuffing generally has butter in it. So that would be the fat too. And stuffing is also a carb. So that'd be an awesome meal to have. Um, Coffee, yeah, that's okay to have after your competition too. You don't might not want to drink too much just because the caffeine can actually dehydrate you more than, than you're already dehydrated from working out. We had another question about sports drinks after competing. Yeah, um, so I do talk about it in a little bit too, but sports drinks are awesome like to drink after you work out just because that's what they were designed to do. They're designed to replace what you lost. They're not recommended just to drink when you're just at home for the day, just walking around because you're not losing all those electrolytes or all that water as much as you would after a competition. And I think we have one more question about sugar, but I think we're going to touch on that soon. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we'll come back to that one. is it did you move to the next slide yes we're on the hydration one does everyone see hydration yep okay okay i think was there a slide before that i missed one of food <laughs> hang on There we go. Oh, geez. Okay, I think mine's mine's still on the other one, but I'll just kind of go with it. <laughs> so you can see if everyone can see four pictures of food, like mm -hmm. berries, and yogurt, and all that stuff. Okay, so these are just kind of examples of snacks that would be good to have after your workout. Um, so there's berries and Greek yogurt. Um, Greek yogurt just has more protein than regular yogurt. Um, so that's a good option. You could do like half of a turkey wrap. Um, if you put some cheese and some vegetables in there, that's a way to get some fats and some carbs as well as your protein from the turkey. Um, drinking a glass of chocolate milk if you can't get another snack is a good replacement too as a snack just because chocolate milk has protein because milk has protein. Um, it has carbs because of milk also has carbs and then fat milk also has fat in it. 
and then the chocolate sauce that's in there helps um, with the carbs as well. And then also cottage cheese and a fruit. I think in this picture, it's pineapple. Um, cottage cheese is a, has a lot of protein in it. If you like cottage mm -hmm. cheese, that's a great snack option too. All right. We had someone ask about chocolate covered strawberries as a snack. Yeah, I think that would be good too, like just for every day. Like if you have that as your dessert, that's a great dessert option. Um, maybe not, it wouldn't be great like immediately after your workout just because it's not giving you any protein, but as a healthy dessert, I think that's a great option. Is everyone else on the hydration slide? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, I did talk about drinking water for the competition earlier, but just to highlight a few more things about hydration since it's one component of an athlete's nutrition that's so important and it matters every day, especially the days leading up to the day of and after. Um, so the recommendation is that fluids and water should be consumed consistently throughout most days. And, and I know from experience that if you're busy on some days and you're running around and you're doing chores, at the end of the day, you just like stop. You're like, wow, I am thirsty and I haven't had anything to drink all day. And then you chug a couple glasses of water and then you go to bed. And it is okay to not be perfect every single day with your water consumption. It's just something to be thinking about, especially as athletes, that is something that is so critical to your performance as athletes is drinking water throughout the day, every single day. Um, for recommendations for how much water you should be drinking a day is um, one ounce per pound of body weight is one way to think about it. And this is if you want to be super hydrated. And this is more if you're for the days that are leading up to your competition, like the week before, think about these recommendations. So if someone weighs 110 pounds, they should drink 110 ounces of water, roughly give or take, not 100 pounds, 90. If they drink like 100 ounces or if they drink 90 ounces, that's also okay. Um, and like just every day, not before the week before, Drinking like eight to 10 cups of water is another way, is another recommendation for athletes. And then lastly, um, hydration could, should consist primarily of just water. If you're someone who doesn't like water or gets sick of water, you can add like flavor enhancers. I just put a random brand on the screen here. Um, and then we said sports drinks before. And those are okay occasionally, but they're best when drank after competition, just because they are replacing what you lost. And that's what they're um, manufactured to do. That's what's, that's why they add sodium in there. That's why they add potassium. It's because you lose those things while you're sweating and not necessarily just when you're doing chores around the house. Haley, we had a question in the chat relating to uh, hydration the day you compete. If you don't drink the day that you compete or after you compete, can you get sick? You won't necessarily get sick. You'll definitely probably feel pretty dizzy. Um, you can feel lightheaded and then you can get muscle cramps. Um, a sign of dehydration is getting your muscles cramping or getting headaches. Um, if you don't drink at all and you're going out, depending on how strenuous it is, you could get so dehydrated that you faint, which would be very dangerous and not good. So. You can get sick, yes, but it depends on how drastic that would be. And Tori, it looks like you have a question as well. You may have to unmute yourself on your end. Can, yes, my question is, can you drown your insides if you drink way too much water? You can. You'd have to drink, the rec like for that, you'd have to be drinking like 10 gallons, 12 gallons of water a day for that to happen with like serious health complications. But that is something that can happen um, if you're drinking that much water. But that's way less or way more than what these recommendations are. So okay. that would be a lot of water. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I drink a lot of water and I'm just afraid if I drink too much water that I can drown myself in one day. No, so no. How much, how much water should we should we drink a day? Recommend uh, eight to ten cups. I would say is a good recommendation. Okay. Um, and that too, like if you're drinking a little more than that, like if you're drinking twelve cups of water a day, that's okay too. 
you're not going to get close to drowning yourself unless you're sipping on gallons of water multiple times a day. Okay. All right. Next slide, Shelby, unless, okay, perfect. So just to kind of wrap, I did want to put a couple helpful websites that you guys can go to. Um, this first one is Choose My Plate, um, and that just kind of goes over what I talked about briefly before. Um, my Plate can give you more information, like more details on how to eat the balanced meals. Um, it talks about like the setup of My Plate and like different ways you can do that. And then also has a lot of recipes that you can print off and try. You can create your own cookbook on there with all the different recipes that you create or that you like. And then um, also eatright.org is, that's the website of the Academy of Nutrition Dietetics. And that also just has some information and articles about sports nutrition, if that's something that you're interested in reading. All right. And just thank you guys for listening. I love teaching this class and I was so happy to be asked to do this and I'm happy to answer any more questions that anyone thinks of or that are in the chat box. We had two questions we hadn't gotten to from the chat book box that I had put on the parking lot. So the okay. first one was how much popcorn would you wanna eat if that's the snack that you're picking? It's two popcorn. cups. Okay. Two cups of popcorn? Two cups of popcorn. Perfect. And then the second question that we had gotten was, what are the best drinks to drink as an athlete? Um, so water is definitely the best choice. Um, if you don't like water, you can do like those Crystal Light, like Crystal Light, if you've heard of those. If you do like the sugar-free ones, just because those, they're not sugar-free, they can have a lot of added sugar in them. And that's something you do want to avoid as athlete because sugar too can actually dehydrate you if you consume too much of it. Um, I don't recommend sodas generally. Um, if you drink soda, diet soda would be better, but generally water is the best choice. I have another question actually. Does seltzer water count for water too? It count yep. as a water intake? Okay. It does, yep. Okay, thank you. Seltzer water, okay. And I saw Tori has her hand up as well. Um. I, I drink a lot of water, but when I get, when I get tired of drinking um, regular water, I put lemon juice in it. Is that okay? Yeah, that's awesome. And that, um, that will get you some vitamin C also just adds flavor in there. Um, and that just counts as water. You wouldn't count that as anything else. So that's a good option. We have another question in the chat. What should you eat the day after competing? After competing, you just kind of want to go back to your balanced meals like you were doing in the days leading up to before, um, making sure you're getting enough protein, enough carbs, and enough fats throughout the day, eating fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. It's time to give Kaylee the biggest round of applause we can give her as a huge thank you for coming to present to us. Thank you so much, Kaylee. Thank I think you, this Kaylee. Was super interesting to learn, right? Oh, yeah. to, especially now that now that we're back and getting back to it, it's good to know some of the stuff that we can implement when we're getting back to some of the the in person stuff. So mm -hmm. super exciting.